In 1908, the son of a preacher named J.C. Hall dropped out of high school, and at the age of 16, he started selling postcards in Norfolk, Nebraska. The postcard venture included his big brothers, Raleigh and William. In those days, if you didn't work, you didn't eat. So J.C. was determined to make a living. By the age of 18, J.C. stepped off a train in Kansas City, Missouri, with hopes of selling even more postcards. He had nearly nothing to his name, but what he did have was two shoeboxes filled with cards to sell. The enterprising teen traveled around the city selling his postcards until he was finally able to open a storefront in downtown Kansas City. Soon, business was strong, and his brother Raleigh joined him in Kansas City, and they named their company Hall Brothers. On January 11, 1915, a fire destroyed their office and all of their inventory. They immediately set up shop again, but they were $17,000 in debt. As postcard sales declined, they recognized the public's desire for more privacy in their communication, so they started offering high-quality valentines and Christmas cards mailed in envelopes. The fire also resulted in the decision to take out a loan for a printing press, and they began to print their own greeting cards by the end of that year. After the first couple years, the new business was doing well, but when the United States entered World War I in 1917, things really began to take off for them. Although the Hall brothers didn't invent the greeting card, they became the driving force behind the popularity of them. J.C. once said, No one in the greeting card business set out to benefit from the war, but in many ways it was an important turning point for the industry. People sought closer contact with one another, especially with their relatives and friends in the service. And servicemen themselves not only enjoyed receiving greetings, but also sending them. As a result, many more men became permanent buyers of cards than ever before. Armed with the success of the Hall Brothers greeting cards, J.C. and his brother continued to innovate, without even trying. In 1917, when the Hall Brothers ran out of solid-color tissue paper to wrap Christmas gifts, they improvised and used fancy decorated French paper they used to line their envelopes. The paper quickly sold out, so they decided to begin printing their own gift wrapping paper with custom designs, effectively becoming the inventors of decorative wrapping paper. J.C. Hall was always intrigued by the word hallmark, which was used by goldsmiths of the day as a mark of quality. Mr. Hall really liked the fact it included his family name. So in 1928, the company began marketing its brand by using the hallmark name on the back of every greeting card. And from this point on, the company was known as Hallmark. Hallmark was the first greeting card company to advertise nationally in the Ladies' Home Journal in 1928. And later, they also began running radio spots. In 1932, Hallmark signed its first licensing deal with an up-and-coming company called Walt Disney. This partnership allowed them to use Walt Disney characters on their cards, which helped them to weather the Great Depression. Interestingly enough, Walt Disney was a grade school friend of J.C.'s wife Elizabeth, and this is how Hallmark secured the deal. The Hallmark slogan, when you care enough to send the very best, was coined in 1944. Ed Goodman, a sales and marketing executive at Hallmark, jotted down his thoughts on what Hallmark stood for, caring, quality, and the very best, which led him to craft the well-known advertising slogan. Hallmark is well known for their presence on television these days, but it all started in 1951, when Hallmark decided to sponsor a movie on NBC. The opera, A Mall and the Night Visitors, aired on Christmas Eve, and it moved viewers to send thousands of letters, cards, and telegrams thanking Hallmark for presenting it. This would be the first in a series of specials that would later become the Hallmark Hall of Fame. During the late 1960s, leadership of the company was turned over to J.C.'s son, Don. 
This new chapter for the company would see Hallmark sales continue to grow, and new product lines were even added. During the 1970s, Hallmark keepsake ornaments were introduced, and this sparked the phenomenon of Christmas ornament collecting. With over a century of selling greeting cards under their belt, Hallmark has created thousands of designs, but one card has been their bestseller. The pansy card, depicting a push cart full of the flowers with a note on the front reading, to let you know I'm thinking of you, has been a sales juggernaut since its introduction for Mother's Day 1939. The simple imagery and appropriateness to any situation has made it Hallmark's longest running card. In 1982, J.C. Hall passed away at the age of 91, but he left his company in good hands. The 80s became a successful time for the family-run company. Not only did they purchase Crayola in 1984, but they also created a character called Rainbow Bright. This character was in response to American Greetings Strawberry Shortcake and was meant to appeal to young girls but Rainbow Bright became a media icon in the 1980s, with toys, a cartoon series, and even a feature film. Also in 1986, Hallmark opened their first Hallmark Gold Crown store. The chain of stores were a way for Hallmark to continue to build their brand and sell their growing list of products directly to customers. J.C. Hall always recognized that television was a good way to connect people to the Hallmark name. What began as movie sponsorships developed into a full-time media company called Crown Media. The Hallmark Channel officially launched in 2001 and has since expanded into a family of networks that annually air their popular Christmas programming. Today, Hallmark has grown into a network of companies with numerous greeting card and product lines. Whenever a major holiday rolls around, there's a pretty good chance you'll still find a greeting card in your mailbox, and the odds are it will be a Hallmark card. Hallmark has come a long way from a man carrying two shoeboxes full of postcards, but it shouldn't surprise you that a company that fosters relationships by connecting people will be here for a very long time to come. Let me know in the comments your own memories of Hallmark, whether that's giving or receiving a nice card, binge-watching Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel, or buying those collectible ornaments. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.